So welcome and uh, we begin our discussion today on something known as functions. It's known as functions. And we arrive that a function is a mathematical expression. A function is a mathematical expression. It's a mathematical expression that shows relationship between between variables is a function is a mathematical expression that shows relationship existing between variables. First up, there are two types of variables in a function. There are two types of a variable or two types of variables in a function. Number one, dependent variable. Dependent variable. Dependent variable, and you write that this is the variable. This is the variable whose values are whose values are influenced by another variable. Influenced by another variable. Full stop. It is usually presented by letter Y. It is usually presented by Reta Y. Number two is called independent variable. Independent variable. And we write that this is a variable. This is a variable which influences which influences the values of y which influences the values of y first stop it is usually presented by letter x it is usually presented by letter X. Okay, then down there you write that a function can only have a function can only have one dependent variable at a time one dependent variable at a time, but can have one or more, but can have one or more 
independent variables at the time. One or more independent variables at the time. So stop. The general format of a function, the general format of a function is y is equal to f of x. y is equal to f in brackets x. Which means, which means that the values of y, the values of y are determined by x. The values of y are determined by x. Stop. When there is only one, when there is only one independent variable, only one independent variable, the function is called univariate. The function is called univariate. The function is called univariate. And is written as, and is written as, y is equal to a plus bx. And is written as, y is equal to a plus bx, where a is called intercept, intercept, that is point at which the function point at which the function touches y axis when plotted. It's called intercepts because it is the point at which the function will touch y axis when plotted. Or you can call it constant. You can call it constant, that is, value of y which does not value of y which does not depend which does not depend on x which does not depend on x. B is called slope or gradient or gradient and that is rate at which y changes rate at which y changes when x changes by one unit when x changes by one unit when x changes by one unit Okay, down there, right, this 
that when the function has when the function has more than one independent variables when the function has more than one independent variables it is called multivariate is called multivariate whose general format is whose general format is y is equals to a plus b1 x1 b2 x2 plus all the way up to bn xn that is a multivariate function. Okay, then down there we write that an equation, an equation refers to an expression refers to an expression that shows equality of two items. That shows equality of two items. Equality of two items. E.g x is equals to y x is equals to y <coughs> however however the terms function and equation the terms function and questions are used in the change of brain. Are used in the change of brain in most cases. In most cases. Another point is that an inequality, an inequality an inequality is an expression is an expression that shows two values are equal two values are equal or not equal at the same time are equal or not equal at the same time. First of all, it can either be equal and less than, can either be equal and less than, brackets x greater than or equal to y, equal and less than, or it can be equal and greater than, or it can be equal and greater than, brackets, x is greater than or equal to y. It's greater than or equal to y. A graph, a graph refers to the diagram obtained. Refers to the diagram obtained diagram obtained 
after plotting the coordinates. After plotting the coordinates of functions on a Cartesian plane. On a Cartesian plane. On a Cartesian plane. First up. Functions are widely used in business. Functions are widely used in business. In such areas as, in such areas as, one, computation of wages and salaries, computation of wages and salaries, Number two, computation of depreciation and appreciation of assets. Depreciation and appreciation of assets. Another one is analysis of demand and supply, analysis of demand and supply. <clears throat> Another one is computation of costs, revenues, and profits, costs, revenues, and profits. The one, <clears throat> determination of maximum, determination of maximum and minimum values, maximum and minimum values of business variables, of business variables. Another one is computation of continuous probabilities. Computation of continuous probabilities. So that is how we can introduce the area called functions. Uh, whatever we have said is very, very direct, nothing technical. And uh, in regard to the applications, we will not discuss an application on its own. Uh, save maybe for this one, Max, there is a point at which it will appear that you read it, whatever. But all of them are intertwined, and there are things that we know. So it's only now showing you how you use functions to compute them. So from there, let's now mention types of functions. Types of functions in business applications. Types of functions in business applications. Types of functions in business applications. And write that there are numerous types of functions. There are numerous types of functions in business applications, in business applications, but the most common, but 
but the most common are one Number one, logarithmic functions. Logarithmic function. Logarithmic function. Right, that this is a function. This is a function which has a logarithm. Which has a logarithm as an element, as an element. Example y is equal to 8 plus 3 log of x. Now for this one, I will not get into a lot of details about uh, what we call the characteristics and the mantissa. I hope you remember those things in form one. <laughs> How to read the wrong tuples, eh? I will also not get into the issues of uh, converting EBCs to logarithms uh, because at your level, with uh, the scientific calculator, you only need to press the button and get the wrong. So you don't need to disturb your knowledge with how to convert all those things, while you only need to press a button and you get the answer. So having said the logarithmic function is a function that has a logarithm that is good enough. Because in any case, if you are told now to get the log of X or the log of whatever, you just press that, uh, you just press the calc, Get the answer and we proceed. So there. Yeah, and I think when we were in descriptive statistics, we came across that. So that is good enough. I have the next one that I'm supposed to mention, or we are supposed to discuss, is exponential function. Exponential function. Exponential function. And we write that this is a function. This is a function whose independent variable, whose independent variable is part of the power, whose independent variable is part of the power. It is mostly used to study. It is mostly used to study distribution of service times. Distribution of service times, comma, depreciation and appreciation of assets. Depreciation and appreciation of assets. The general format is the general format is y is equal to a e raised power x. A e raised power x, where y is the current value. A is the original value. E, Nakubuka is 2.7182. And X is the time period. So 
Yeah, so even this one, I will not get into a lot of details about it for two reasons. One, as I told you, this function, we normally use it in a topic that is no longer part of the syllabus, a topic known as queuing theory. So as I said earlier, they should also have removed this one because that's where it's more used. I don't know why they retained it. Uh, and the topic, the main topic has been removed. Number two reason why I'm not getting into a lot of details is that we came across it when we were dealing with the probabilities. I hope you remember the exponential distribution, eh? And we had several examples of how to get E, how to use these kind of functions, even in the car. So I don't want to repeat ourselves back to that. Okay. Uh, the next function that is mentioned here that I'm supposed to teach you is called linear function. <coughs> linear function. Linear function. Linear function, and you write that. This is a function which has the following characteristics. This is a function which has the following characteristics. One, or Roman one, the highest power of the independent variable is one. The highest power of the dependent variable is one. That is y is equal to a, y is equal to a plus bx. Column b is not equal to zero. That means B must not be equal to zero. Y is equal to A, BX. The meaning of this is that A can be zero, right? Or A can be not there, but B must be there. Character number two. The function produces a straight line when plotted on a graph. The function produces a straight line when plotted on a graph. Number three, the function is fully defined. The function is fully defined when coordinates, fully defined when coordinates of any two values have been provided. Coordinates of any two values have been provided. Sorry, I should have said coordinates of any two points. Any two points, not values. Any two points have been provided. Have been provided. Or, or we are still the same point, or the gradient, the gradient and coordinates and coordinates of any one point have been provided. Of any one point have been provided. Example one.
develop and brought the equation, develop and brought the equation of a function passing through point A and B, point A is two, four, B is uh, six, 12. Okay, make a solution. Solution. Uh, if you are given uh, two values and uh, when you are in functions, the very first thing is already to write the format. Anytime you are dealing with functions, the very first thing is to write the format. So the format is y is equals to a plus bx as a format of a linear function. Now you then substitute these values. And we know from our primary school that this must always be x or y. X. So then we are going to say 4 is equals to a plus 2b. This is because of point a. Then 12 should be equal to a plus 6b. This is because of point B. And then you subtract here. So that four minus 12 is negative what? Eight. And uh, this one will be equal to zero and this is minus what? Or B. So B must be equal to what? Two. B must be equal to two. And if B is equal to two, then you say four is equal to A plus two times two. So that tells you that A should be equal to zero. So the equation. The equation is y is equal to zero plus two x. Y is equal to zero plus two x. Now, if you are told to plot on the graph, if you are told to plot on the graph, what you need to do is very simple. You need to come and check the values of x. The highest value of x is six. And the values of y, they are usually three. There is this four, this 12, and this eight. So the highest is 12, while the lowest is what? Zero. So I want to sketch just like a very small graph, but to scale, just like a small one, but to scale, uh, this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, uh, eleven, twelve. So this is zero, this is one, 
two, three, four, five, and six. That's like a small graph. This is x-axis. Then this is one, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. This is y axis. Then to myself, I only require two points. So you go to where there is a two and four. So two and four are meeting at 70. This is a point A, two and four, and it's where they meet. Then you go to where there is six and uh, 12. Six and 12. This point here, that is point B. Then connect the two points with a very straight line. And you notice that line touches Y axis at zero. See there? Because the value of A is what? Zero. So if the value of A, for example, was six, it would have touched at what? At six. So then you tell us this is the equation y is equal to two x. Y is equal to two x. Look at example two. Example number two, develop and plot a function. Develop and plot a function passing through point A passing through point A, three, five and B Seven seventeen. So, I'd like you to allow like a small space, like what this other one has taken. You do that. That is part of your notes. Allow like a small space, like what this other one has taken. After you have allowed that space, I think example three. Example three. Example three. And you write that develop a function. Develop a function. Of an equation of an equation passing through point A, passing through point A, which is 18 and 30, 18 and 30, and has a gradient of minus three. As a gradient of minus three. So solution to that, solution to that, again, you start by telling us the format is y is equal to a plus b x. y is equal to a plus b x. So as I eat, the same uh, 30 is equal to a, plus b, b now we know is minus three. 
times 18. So based on that, tell me what is the value of A. Value of A. Is equals to what? The four. So the equation, the equation is y is equals to eight the four minus three x. Minus three x. So we shall not plot that. At least you know how to plot. Uh, example four. Example four. Develop a function of a line passing through point B. Of a line passing through point B. Minus four. Eight minus four eight and has a gradient of five and has a gradient of five. So here you will. Uh, Allow like a small space like what the other one has taken. So that is about the linear functions. They are the most common. Actually, what we shall be doing, as you notice, they will be the majority. Let's now proceed to discuss the next type of functions, which is quadratic function. Quadratic function. Quadratic function. quadratic function, quadratic function, All right, that this is a function which has the following characteristics, which has the following characteristics. One, the highest power of the independent variable is two. The highest power of the independent variable is two. That is y is equals to ax square plus bx plus c where A must not be equal to zero. The highest power is two, and A must not be equal to zero. Two, the function produces the function produces On the one turning point, on the one turning point, when plotted on a graph, when plotted on a graph. Number three, the function is fully defined. The function is fully defined when coordinates, when coordinates of any three points, coordinates of any three points 
have been provided. Coordinates of any three points have been provided. Okay, another point, number three now, number three or four, three, yeah? Four. The function can be solved, rather, the function has two solutions. The function has two solutions. The function has two solutions, which can be solved graphically or using a formula. Which can be solved graphically or using a formula. So stop, but still now on the same point. When a graph is used, when a graph is used, the values of X, rather the values at which, the values at which, the values at which, the equation touches X axis, the values at which the equation touches x axis are the solutions. Are the solutions. First of all. The quadratic formula is written as false. The quadratic formula is written as false. X is equal to what? Minus B plus or minus the square root of what? B squared minus four is C. You divide all this by what? Two A, very good. See, you have not forgotten it. Mathematics in high school. So that is uh, the quadratic formula. Okay, Sasa. Dika example one. Example one, and this is a question that was tested some times in June 2008 as question one C. And the question reads like this. So Nandika, Juakari Products Limited has been in operation for the last 10 years. Juakari Products Limited has been in operation for the last 10 years. First of all, its annual revenue and cost functions its annual revenue and cost functions take the form of quadratic functions. Take the form of quadratic functions. First of all, the following data was obtained from the records of the company. The following data was obtained from the records of the company. We have details. Under details, we have units produced and sold. We have revenue. Revenue in shillings. We have costs in shillings. 
Now, this is the year 2005. We had five units. We had a revenue of 1900 at a cost of 75. 25. In the year 2006, we had uh, 10 units. This is that 600, and this is 7100. And in the year 2007, Units are 15, the revenue is 100, and this is 67.25. Required, required, develop revenue and cost functions for the company. Develop revenue and costs functions for the company. So I think a solution. Solution. So when you are dealing with uh, functions, I've said you always begin by the format. So let's begin with revenue function. Revenue function. Revenue function. So the format of the revenue function will be R is equals to AX square plus BX plus C. Now, if you look at the other format that I gave you, I have used Y instead of R. Now, Y is the letter we use to represent many others. But when you are in a specific case, you can choose to use a particular letter. Like now, when we are in revenue, we use what? Ah, lakini yata ukutumia why, haina shida. Bora unajua why in Hispania. So what now we do is bring the first revenue. The first revenue is uh, what? 1900. So you put 1900 here, equals, X, X is five. So five squared is what? So 25A plus 5B plus C. And this one, you call it equation number one. Then you bring the second amount of revenue, which is that 600. That 600 being equal to uh, the value of x is 10. So 10 squared is uh, 100. So 100a plus 10b plus c. That is equation number two. I have to kwa huyo mwingine, na itua 5100. 5100 is equals to 15. If you square 15, what do you get? Yeah. 225A plus 15B plus C. That is equation number three. Now, when you have the equations in place, the spontaneous equations, you have several methods at your disposal. You can use matrices. We saw how to use matrices. Or you can use the elimination. So elimination is the easiest one. So we will then say, removing C, removing C 
from equations one and two. C is the easiest to move because you can see the coefficients are the same. So I will then have 1900 here being equal to 25A plus 5B plus C. And then that 600 being equal to 100A plus 10B plus C. So you minus these ones. So tell me 1900 minus that 600 is what? Minus 1700. 25 minus 100 is what? Minus 75A. 5 minus 10 is that? Negative 5B. And this one, you call it equation number 4. You call it equation number 4. Then you proceed and say, removing C from equations. Two and three. Moving C from equations two and three, you will have that 600 being equal to 100A plus 10B plus C. 5100 is equal to 225A plus 15B plus C. You minus and then get uh, that 600 minus 100 is what? Negative. 1500. 100 minus 225 is minus. 125A, uh -huh. 10 minus 15 is what? Minus 5B. Uh, and this is uh, equation number five. Equation number five. Then we can proceed and say removing B, from equations, from equations uh, four and five, from equations four and five, we have minus 1700 being equal to minus 75B minus 5B. Then minus 1500 being equal to minus 125B minus 5B. Now you can see clearly that B, it is removable because the coefficients are the same. So we must then subtract. So 1700 minus minus 1500, you are left with minus what? 200 and minus 75 minus minus 125, you are left with what? 50B and this other one disappears. Eh? Oh, sorry, to call these are A's. Eh? Thank you. This is A, it is A, this is A. So 50A, uh, so based on that, we are able to tell that A is minus what? Minus four. Then we proceed and say substituting, substituting in equation five, in equation five, we have minus 1500 
being equal to minus 125 times minus 4 minus 5b. So then this becomes what? Give me the value of b from there. Two hundred. Okay. Two hundred. The two hundred. So this is uh, what? 500. So 500, you can get 1500 in the No, that's negative. Negative. So negative. You see, if you brought this one this side, it will now be 5B. Still. And this one multiplied by this, they become positive. See there? Then who you are positive. So based on that, B should be what? 400. No, no, no. Yeah, so B is 400. B is 400. So if B is 400, then we say substituting in equation one, substituting in equation one, you will then tell us 1900 is equals to 25 times minus four, that I forget about that, plus five times 400, plus C. So based on that, uh-huh. This is 2,000 minus 100, that should be zero. No. Are you able to confirm it is zero? Yeah. So the equation or the function is now r is equals to minus 4x squared plus 400x plus zero. So that is the equation. Now, if they told you to solve this now using, although that's like how to put in this one, but if you are told to solve using, using quadratic formula, using quadratic formula, the using quadratic formula, we will say that x is minus b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac, we get the square root of this, which is divided by 2a. which is divided by 2a
we are going to have x being equal to minus b, so minus 400 plus or minus 400 squared minus four times uh, times A, which is minus four, times C, which is zero. Then this one, that's the square root. Then the whole of this, you divide by two times minus uh, four. So this becomes minus 400 plus or minus. Uh, give me this, 400. And this is uh, minus eight, minus eight. So this then becomes minus 400 minus 400. You divide by minus eight or minus 400 plus 400. You divide by minus eight. Remember we say the equation has two solutions. So Sasa, this will be minus what? Actually positive. 100 or zero or zero. So those are the answers. Now, if you are to use a graph, use the graph. Using a graph. Now we are not going to plot these values. It will take a lot of our time, but I just want to illustrate how it will look like. Uh, it will be like this. Actually, we need to show it like this. This is y axis. This is x-axis. Somewhere here we have a hundred. And this is zero. Just a sketch. So this function, itakuwa inatoka huku, itapitia kwa zero there, then itapituka itapitia hapo. So later on, we shall get to know how to get this time point. Eh? We shall get to know how to get that. But for now, what I want you to see is that if you are to plot this value, this function, eh? if the pt is half a zero, eh, if I the two, then it remove it, which is pt is a hundred. Because you see, when you are using the graph, the values at which it touches x-axis are the solution. And then we also say that this function has only one turning point. Turning point is the point at which we are changing direction. The point at which we are changing direction. So can you be able to do the same with the cost function? So cost function, now here we normally use, uh, although at times people confuse these seeds because they are two seeds, eh? They are two seeds, so we prefer to use TC. Either TC for the total costs, or you can also use Y so that you don't confuse 
I mean, these are the one. A x square plus B x plus C. So that this one does not confuse here. So Sasa, you guys the same thing. That the cost is 75, 25. 75, 25, B equals 25A plus 5B plus C. And this one, you call it equation number one. Uh, we will begin it, 7100. So 7100 being equal to uh, 10, or rather 100A plus 10B plus C. That is equation number two. Next is 6725. 6725 is equal to 225A plus 15B plus C. That is equation number three. So proceed like we have done with the other one and give me the answers. Proceed in the same way that we have
Ah, what are the answers? You got any? Uh huh. My answer na which one? C. A. A. You have got that what? Eh? One. Ah. Uh, then you have gone to be negative one hundred. C. You have got that what? Eight thousand. We agree. Good. So I hope those are all right now. So in agreement with that. So if you are in agreement, then the equation. The equation is y is equals to uh, 1x squared minus 100x plus 8,000. Plus 8,000. Then using quadratic formula, quadratic formula, uh, x is uh, minus, so that would be a hundred, no? because of minus, minus. So plus or minus a hundred squared minus four times a is one times eight thousand. And you get the square root. This one, I don't know whether it will be solvable. Uh, two times uh, eight. This one should give you it's giving you a negative, right? That's all. Uh -huh. What are you getting here? The square root. Let's 
targeting. Now, don't keep on doing it five times. Give me what you're getting. You know what you're getting. Tell me what you're getting. What is the cult telling you? Yeah, that's what I was waiting. That's a machine that we can give you what you are getting. So your math error, uh, you divide by two, you divide by two, infinite. Your calc calls it math error, but if you get a little bit deeper in mathematics, we call it uh, non-real numbers. Non-real. So for your case, eh, that is not so bad. Kipata kama hiyo unasema it's not so bad. But if you get deeper into mathematics, you will come across some theorems we call the movers that will show you how to solve that. Now, if you are using a graph, if you are using a graph, if you are using a graph, then what will happen? We will have what we call a point of inflection. A point of inflection like this. Sorry, a uh, uh, asymptotic function. So it will not touch x axis. This y axis, and this is x axis. So now that we are not able to get the solution here, it tells you it is not touching what? X axis. We call it asymptotic. But that is slightly above your case. Now, for your assignment, for your assignment, I'd like you to use the data that is on page 43. There is a question that was tested in uh, May 2015. May 2015 as question uh, 1c. In that question, I just want you to use the data and develop a quadratic function. Develop a quadratic function. Just do that. Don't do anything else what the question is talking about. So I just want you to use that data that is there and you develop a quadratic function. We shall discuss as we go by and by. Good. Let's now move on and mention the other one called cubic function. Cubic function. Cubic function. And uh, write that this is a function. This is a function whose highest power of the independent variable, whose highest power of the independent variable is three. Whose highest power of the independent variable is three. That is y is equals to ax cubed plus bx squared plus CX plus D, where A must not be equal to zero. Uh, 
function is the highest power is equals to three. That is y is equals two. And you write that the function is fully defined. Another point the function is fully defined when coordinates of any four values, any four points, when coordinates of any four points have been provided, have been provided. Another point is that the function shows, the function shows Two turning points when plotted on a graph. Two turning points when plotted on a graph. Now, this one, I will not get to the extent of developing it because your syllabus does not get into that. The only small bit you get it is when we are in calculus. Uh, so, that is where we shall come across it when we are differentiating or integrating. So that one will not get to that uh, extent. Good. So we are through with that bit of uh, differentiation. I mean, uh, of uh, functions. So the next area of concern is called calculus, and in calculus we look at differentiation. Calculus, look at differentiation. And rather to differentiate means to separate. To differentiate means to separate. First of all. Differentiation, differentiation is a technique in calculus, is a technique in calculus used to determine the gradient, used to determine the gradient or rate of change or rate of change for non-linear functions, rate of change for non-linear Functions. Full stop. A function is always differentiated. A function is always differentiated with respect to with respect to the independent variable or variables with respect to the independent variable or variables. First of all, when a function has been differentiated, when a function has been differentiated, it is known as differential, it is known as differential 
or derivative or marginal or rate. It is known as differential or derivative or marginal or rate, which is written as dy dx or f of x with the, the cost of that way. Or something like that. If you see a casebo, small one like that, this, this, that means the function has been differentiated. Then down there, you write that. When differentiating functions, when differentiating functions, the following rules of EDCs are important. The following rules of EDCs are important to remember. <clears throat> the following rules of EDCs are important to remember. So one, what we say, if you are given a number like that, it is that number raised to power one. And if you are given a number raised to power zero, it is one. Number three, if you are given one out of A, it is that number raised to power minus one. Number four, if you are given a number raised to power m, multiplied by another number raised to power m, it is that number raised to power m plus m. Number five is that if you are given a number, a raised to power m, and we divide by that number a raised to power m, it is that number m minus m. So those rules are very, very important as we go through the integration and differentiation, see how they come in handy. Then the other thing is uh, down there you write that. The following rules are commonly used in this, the following rules are commonly used in differentiation. The following rules are commonly used. in differentiation. So number one is constant rule. constant rule and we write that a constant is an element in a function. A constant is an element in a function that does not have, that does not have the independent variable that does not have the independent variable as a coefficient. Does not have the independent variable as a coefficient. Stop. 
the differential of a constant, the differential of a constant is zero, is zero. Look at that. If y is equals to seven, dy dx is zero. Remember we have said differentiation is a method of getting the rate of change. And something that is called constant is something that is not changing. So its rate of change is zero. Uh, rule number two is general rule. General rule. This states that, this states that, the following steps should be taken. The following steps should be taken when differentiating a function. When differentiating a function. Roman one. Multiply the function using the original power. Multiply the function using the original power. Roman two. Reduce the original power by one. Reduce the original power by one. Okay, then down the right. When these steps are followed, when these steps are followed, comma, y is equal to a x raised to power n becomes dy dx, dy dx equals, so you take the first, uh, the power here, so that will be n, ax raised power n, then you subtract one. So you are multiplying by the original power, then you reduce by one. So I think example one. Or just example. Example. Y is equal to X raised to power three. You're told Y is equal to X raised to power three. Now, dy dx, dy dx, it is simply, you take three, x, three minus one, and this adds up at three x what? Squared. That's what we call the general rule. Uh, that was number two. So we go to number three. Addition and subtraction rule. Addition and subtraction rule. So Tadika is Y is a function of U plus V plus or minus V. Okay. 
Then dy dx is equals to du dx plus or minus dv dx. Plus or minus. In other words, if you are given various items in one function, you just differentiate them provider. So example one. Example one. If you are told y is equal to x raised to power four plus 10x squared. minus 5x, minus 5x, plus 13, prepare okay, something like that. dy dx, dy dx, according to our general rule, actually general rule to in a tumika kila mahali, these are the assigned modifications. So according to the general rule, una chukua hii 4, una sema 4x raised power 4, u minus 1. Plus, haya, una chukua 2 hapa, 2 into brackets, 10x raised power 2 minus 1. That way. Minus now this one, now that J does not have a power here, it means this is power one, according to the rules of indices we gave. One, uh, five X is power one, minus one. Plus, when you see this one here, without X, it is, it has X but raised power zero, so X became one. So it's like then we say it's zero, into brackets that till x is power zero. So he the he value. So this now becomes four x cubed plus twenty x twenty x yet I can say raised power one minus 5x raised power 0 plus 0 plus 0 so that finally it adds up as what 4x cubed plus 20x minus Five. Is that okay? Is that okay? <laughs> you did not look convinced. Okay. So example two. Example two. If they give you y is equal to x raised to minus 7 plus 4x cubed minus 12x plus 16, you're given something like that. Then dy dx will be minus seven into brackets, x is for minus seven minus one, plus three into brackets, four x three minus one. That way, minus one into brackets, 12 x raised to power one minus one. Plus zero, 16 X raised to power zero minus one.
So this one adds up as minus seven X raised to the minus eight plus 12 X squared minus 12. Minus 12. <laughs> I think we can stop there now. Na is it Jimmy? May not finish. So we pick up from there next time. Thank you.